Hey there, Pyromaniacs. This is gonna be another more unscripted video just because I have a lot of stuff on my plate. I don't really have a lot of time to make like more, you know, scripted content that I really wanna make, but I need to get something out and I have stuff to talk about. I wanna start this video out by kind of posing a theory about like where Hollywood is gonna be going in the next 10 years. So the 2010s were very clearly kind of the era of the comic book movie. You know, obviously we had the MCU, we had the DCEU, but I really theorize that the next 10 years, the 2020s are going to be kind of defined as the era of the video game movie. You know, just look at like the last couple years. We've had the Sonic movie, the Monster Hunter movie, the Resident Evil movie, the Mortal Kombat movie. We've had all these major video game movies coming out. Right now in theaters, we have an Uncharted movie and Sonic 2. And that brings me to what I want to talk about in this video. I just saw Sonic the Hedgehog 2 a couple days ago. And at the same time, I'm also currently watching the Halo TV series. And I kind of felt like comparing and contrasting these two video game adaptations, because I feel like they both did very similar things with the source material, but some things that the Sonic movie did, that the Halo TV show also did, worked better for the Sonic movie than it did for the Halo TV show. A major thing is that neither one is a direct adaptation of the video games. They take extreme liberties with the source material, which works for Sonic because Sonic has never really had a consistent continuity to begin with. There have been several adaptations. Just in the first like 10 years of Sonic's existence, there was Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sad AM, the manga that nobody knows about, the OVA, the Archie comics, the Fleetway comics. There were so many different adaptations of the canon you can kind of get away with taking some liberties with the character and the world he inhabits. Meanwhile, Halo has an ongoing, consistent universe with deep lore and books and movies. It's just disappointing. This is the first, like, big budget adaptation we're getting of Halo, and it's just set in this alternate timeline. If you don't know, as of late, 343 has been trying to introduce this concept of fractures. The idea of there being a multiverse within Halo and all these different alternate timelines that kind of coincide with each other. And the Halo TV series is kind of implied to be one of those fractures. And that's a cool concept. If you look at this as an Elseworlds story, that is an interesting idea. But it's not advertised as an Elseworlds story. This is advertised as an adaptation of the video game. And as far as an adaptation goes, it's terrible. And also, this is the first time we get to see a lot of things that have only been like mentioned in the books. Like Parangoski, the creator of the Spartan 4 project, she's here. And we finally get to see Madrigal, the home planet of the Insurrectionists. And we finally get to see the Rubble. And we get to see Soren, the rogue Spartan. We get to see these things, but it's not the main canon, so why do I care? It's just bizarre that I don't really know who this is for. With the Sonic movie, you can kind of say, okay, this is telling a story that's clearly supposed to appeal to kids, but you still have those characters. There are a lot of really cool things in that movie that both newcomers and veterans of the series alike can enjoy. But with the Halo series, a newcomer isn't going to understand the significance of these things. And for a veteran, it's not gonna matter because this isn't the main timeline. So why would we care that we're seeing these things when it could be totally different from what's actually in the current universe? because they also changed entire backstories to characters. Miranda Keys is no longer this brilliant ship captain like her father. She's a scientist. And Cortana is no longer just a highly advanced, top-of-the-line ship AI. She's a mind control device to take over the minds of Spartans and pacify them if they try to go rogue? What? And that's not even going into the introduction of new characters that completely contradict the whole point of certain aspects of the original games. The Sonic movie took liberties, but it didn't go completely off the wall. Knuckles is still connected to the Master Emerald in some way. Sonic is still a quippy teen with attitude. And even when it comes to like the deeper lore with the Echidnas, the Echidnas are still this tribe that are deeply connected to the Master Emerald and stuff. All that is still intact. They didn't get rid of any of that. The Halo series, on the other hand, threw everything out the window and just made stuff up, which is not how you're supposed to do an adaptation. It's so weird. I feel like this is starting to become a trend on my channel, just me comparing Halo to Sonic. 
because I genuinely think there are a lot of weird comparisons you can make between the two IPs, and I just so happen to be a big fan of both. And it always seems like one always succeeds where the other fails. It's just weird. And I just wanted to make this video because I genuinely think that the future of Hollywood and the future of film is going to be video game adaptations. And we are most likely going to get both of these kinds of things going forward. We are going to get the pretentious hack director who's forced to make a video game adaptation when he actually hates video games, and then we're gonna get these love letters to fans that take liberties, but do it in a more respectful way. Except for the wedding scene. The wedding scene was just dumb. Honestly, I think that's all I really have to say on this subject. The Halo show, I don't think I'm gonna watch past episode 3. That show is just atrocious. Don't watch it. But Sonic 2, I had a really good time. I thought it was a really enjoyable film. But I guess with that said, uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then leave a like and become a paramedic yourself by subscribing. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.